In the Pulse Power Science Center, we do a bunch of different types of experiments. I specifically work on the Z-Machine, which is the world's largest pulse power driver. I work on magnetic direct drive fusion, which is when you use a large current to compress a capsule to try and achieve thermonuclear fusion. So you're trying to produce energy by fusing together two atoms. The Z facility, it's capable of storing about 20 megajoules of energy in the capacitors and it discharges that energy in less than a millionth of a second, delivers about 80 terawatts of electrical power to the load, and for reference, the entire world average energy usage is about 15 to 20 terawatts of power. So this is substantially more than that, but again, we're only doing this for a very, very small period of time. When you're interested in fusion, one of the things that you have to overcome is the fact that the two atoms that you're trying to fuse together want to repel each other because they're both positively charged. So in order to do that, you have to put in enough energy to get past that potential barrier and release this larger amount of energy. One way that people have found you can do that is by increasing the temperature. The temperatures you're trying to achieve are tens or hundreds of millions of degrees. And as a result, you can't actually confine this plasma very effectively with anything other than either magnetic fields or gravitational confinement, which is what's in the stars, or a trick that we play is inertial confinement, which is where you utilize the fact that this material can't repel itself away faster than uh, the sound speed in the material. So you try and get it hot enough and dense enough, and even though it's only occurring over a relatively short period of time, you can still get a good amount of fusion reactions to take place. Inertial confinement fusion and magnetic confinement fusion are typically two opposite branches that are trying to achieve the same thing in different ways. In our concept, we're applying inertial and magnetic confinement to the plasma to try and make it a little bit easier to get to our end goal of fusion. Inertial confinement fusion experiments, many people hope in the long term, will have some sort of application to energy production. In the near term, while we're working on that, there are stockpile stewardship applications for the experiments that we do. I guess I would say that I'm most excited by the aspect of producing something that nobody else has ever produced before. Matter in such an extreme condition and being able to diagnose what's happening in that is sort of unlocking these mysteries that people didn't even know existed uh, 100 years ago.